Hi everybody, my name is Neil Bateja and I'm a board member with the National Youth Rights Association. Um, we're here today at Prospect High School in Saratoga, California with Assembly Member Evan Lowe. Um, so before we get started and ask some questions, I just wanted to say thanks to Mr. Medina and the video production students for having us here today and uh, thanks Assembly Member Lowe for taking some time to come out. Happy to be here. All right, so before we get into the bill and this idea of a voting age of 17, um, I just wanted to ask a little bit about what you were up to when you were 17. Um, I heard that you were scheming about how to graduate college in three years, but um, where was your mind politically and do you think you would have wanted to vote when you were 17? At 17 years old, I was active uh, playing uh, computer games Starcraft with a lot of friends. Yeah. Um, but uh, when I wasn't doing that and was in school, uh, I would be volunteering a lot with our community-based organizations. And so I was vice president of my key club at Leland High School, and then also doing food collections and donations uh, with my father, who was a part of what we referred to as the Lions Club. So these are service organizations that help provide opportunities of volunteering in our community. So those are the type of things that I was doing. Okay, so a uh, concerned citizen. And uh, do you think you were interested in politics or were interested in voting? Uh, as a, uh, Growing up as an Asian American and uh, being that my father was an optometrist, he wanted mm -hmm. me to be, he become a doctor. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I didn't necessarily follow in that path. I wasn't particularly fond of math or science in that way, but I believed in public service and giving back. And so... Mm -hmm. Uh, to me, government was an extension of that, the ultimate sense of uh, public and community service, or civic duties. And so that's why I volunteered and got more involved in that way. Okay. So why don't we talk um, a little bit about this bill in the State Assembly, which, um, if it passes, would put a measure, I think, before the voters. And then if that passes, the voting age in the state of Cali California would um, be 17. So. I guess I'm just wondering, how did you hear about this idea for the first time, and um, what made you think that this is a good idea, and how has it been talking to your colleagues in the State Assembly who maybe haven't considered this before? Well, let's think about this notion about our duty and our obligation to society. Mm -hmm. And as young people, oftentimes, when you look at the voting populations of 18 to 35, uh, one of the lowest voting demographics uh, within that of the electorate. Mm -hmm. And then you also think about our obligations of civics and our duty. And not many millennial, I'm a millennial, but not mm -hmm. many young people typically think about politics in a positive way, which is that when they think about the imagery of a, a typical politician, they probably won't think about someone that is young. Mm -hmm. And why is that the case? Typically a politician might be retired or independently wealthy and ha has the time, or energy, or resources to be able to commit to that of public service. When young people in this day and age, for example, as we're talking here in Silicon Valley, the cost of living itself is unbearable and that of the various other issues of cost of transportation, housing, and just mm -hmm. putting food on the table. And so I want to encourage and provide an opportunity for young people to participate in this process. And when you are at the age of 17, for example, uh, you're captured in the classroom and voting is relevant to you. Whereas if you are under the voting age as we currently have it, how is it relevant to individuals? And should you become 18, you may be traveling to other places or um, focused on college mm -hmm. uh, and not necessarily back at home. And so the bill proposal that I had was referred to ACA 10, which mm -hmm. would, if passed by the legislature, put before the California electorate an opportunity to lower the voting age from 18 to 17 years old. All right, and um, what have the reactions been from from your colleagues? Do they think that this is a crazy idea, or when they when they hear you, you know, talk about it the way you just did, does that make sense to them? Or well, uh, I think it's a different perspective that I might have with respect mm -hmm. to young people being able to participate in the process. In fact, when I was 21 years old, I ran for city council in the city of Campbell. Mm -hmm. uh, I lost at that time, but uh, ran again at 23 and was successful. And when I ran for office and knocked on doors of individuals in the city, many individuals said, 
uh, I have shirts and ties that are older than you, or mm -hmm. um, what, what uh, school do you go to? Um, not thinking that I had something c to contribute. And so I think it's important to think about that of judgment versus that of pure experience. Mm -hmm. um, simply by having gray hair does not necessarily uh, constitute that of judgment or the commitment to represent and reflect the community accordingly. And so it's important to engage with our young electorate. And in fact, when to answer your question, and when talking about the mm -hmm. capacity of 17-year-olds, for example, uh, when I talked to one of my other colleagues, a Republican colleague who is in his 70s, a Vietnam veteran, mm -hmm. I said, tell me, can you tell me why, uh, what you think about this issue? And he had mentioned, well, when, you're, when I was uh, in Vietnam and you're 17 years old, yep. you're old enough to die for your country, you should be able to vote, and that's why I'm going to support this bill. Yeah, so it provided a unique perspective in that case. But the vast majority, I would say, of individuals that I spoke with thought it was a crazy idea. Mm -hmm. 17 years olds are playing with their Snapchat. They're playing on their Facebook. And I said, actually, they're not on Facebook. They're on Instagram and Snapchat. That's if fair. you knew anything about the 17 years olds and, and the different generations. But it goes to show about the capacity of individuals. And as I mentioned earlier, we have great talents from individuals who are 17 years old. Uh, and we, as we testified in support for this piece of legislation, mm -hmm. we actually had someone who was 16 years old who had a patent pending. And so right. I looked at my fellow colleagues and said, how many patents do you have pending? And so when we think about young people, it's important to give them the opportunity. And I know that we will be up for the challenge. All right. Well, um, it's good to hear that there are people on both sides of the aisle and uh, both young and old who are supporting this. and. Um, I guess we still have some work cut out for us to get it to pass in the state assembly, but um, when you're all done with that, I have another idea to pitch to you. Um, so Governor Scott Walker in Wisconsin recently signed a bill which would let 16 and 17 year olds work just the way you and I do without having a special work permit. And um, a lot of young folks who come from a disadvantaged background might not have a responsible adult at home to sign off on that work permit. and you know, might end up turning to selling drugs or um, getting victimized in sex trafficking like Centoya Brown. So I was wondering what you'd think of the idea of expanding the right to work, um, just like we're in support of expanding the right to vote in California. I know you and Scott Walker don't agree on much, but maybe this one. What I think the fundamentals I think about is with respect to how we continue to empower Mm -hmm. young people, which is let's give them opportunity and not let's let's let us not patronize young people as if they're incapable of right. taking the type of responsibility for the call to action. And so whether or not be working or casting a vote or participating as an active citizen, I think instilling in individuals at a young age is important for lifelong habits. Mm -hmm. And so I would be very encouraged to think about that opportunity to empower young people and giving them opportunity. Um, so that's all the questions that I personally had prepared, but we have a few questions from our students here. So um, Mason was thinking about this most recent election and how maybe the younger generation, you know, on average tended to vote one way and the older generation tended to vote another way. So. Do you see this uh, idea of lowering the voting age as a way to change that balance? As I mentioned, in the state legislature in California, mm -hmm. uh, I had a number of Republicans supporting this piece of legislation. In fact, Republican co-author of this measure because mm -hmm. they also believed in the importance of engaging with young people and providing them opportunity. Most certainly there will be a narrative about whether or not there's a distinction of supporting younger people because they typically are more left-leaning or more mm -hmm. on the political spectrum of the Democratic Party. But we can also find other circumstances and instances to which you find conservative 17 and 16 year olds as well. So I don't think it's a partisan issue as clearly stated and so it's important that we look at it in a different way. Yeah, that's important. In, uh, in San Francisco when we were knocking on doors about the uh, ballot measure there to lower the voting age to 16, we had a couple of Republicans who supported us. So it's good that this isn't viewed as just a uh, you know, liberal agenda to make California even more democratic or anything like that. Sure. And I think also when you think about the, the definition of adulthood, 
<laughs> it is sub sort of subjective. And there were some rational comments, which is to say that in the state of California, you need to be 21 to drink, mm -hmm. but 16 years old to vote, 18 years old to smoke. Uh, are there not some discrepancies listed in mm -hmm. the state uh, in state law? And I would agree with that. Uh, at the same time, I would very much be open to responsibility and that of the duty uh, that is provided to that of Californians. And if there is a fundamental conversation about that, I'm willing to have that. But I think that this proposal to lowering the voting age from 18 to 17 provides mm -hmm. us that opportunity to be responsive to this conversation. Yeah. Um, so we have another, another question from a student, Kira. She's wondering with California and the Bay Area being so democratic already, would lowering this voting age to 17 um, and including younger people who are maybe on average more democratic anyway, would it really change the results of the elections in California? And are we hoping that other states would be inspired to lower their voting ages as well? When, when the question becomes that of will more Democrats be part of the voter roll file uh, in the state of California, if you were to expand to allow a demographic and population of 17 year olds to vote, I think it's incumbent upon that of our educators and our parents mm -hmm. to be able to help educate on these issues fundamentally. And here's the benefit of having 17 year olds being able to vote. You have them captured in their civics or government class to be able to talk about what are the issues at hand and how will this affect you? What is Proposition A? Let's have a mm -hmm. debate. Certain groups of the classrooms can say uh, one side represents the pro, one side represents the con. Mm -hmm. What is the, also the other benefit of having 17 year olds being able to vote? You would have candidates and politicians coming to high schools, mm -hmm. coming before them and saying, you are eligible electorate, what do you care about? And so why is it the case that you don't see politicians coming to high schools, but yet you see politicians going to senior retirement homes? Mm -hmm. There's a clear distinction as to the answer to that. And so allowing this to open up, I think it'd be important so that our elected representatives will continue to be accountable to young people. We have another question from Mason, um, who's 18 and doesn't feel quite informed or quite ready to vote yet. Um, but is also wondering if we did lower the voting age, would that get people uh, his age more interested and informed in the issues earlier and get them to be well-prepared, educated voters? By allowing 17-year-olds to vote, we would now naturally instill a lifelong habit of voting. And that mm -hmm. is also the intended purpose, to allow for 17-year-olds to start early and to vote frequently. And at the same time, they're captured in the classroom to help incentivize and promote an opportunity for the civics and government teachers to have an honest discussion and debate because it's now relevant to them. To be able to say, here is a ballot. Here is how you vote. Here mm -hmm. is how to read the arguments in support. Here is how to read the arguments in opposition. And here is what a proposition is. Here is what an open space district member does. Here's what a water board member does. Here's what a board of supervisor does, a city council member does. These type of things are important when we talk about that of the electorate. And let me also just say this. In the November 2014 election, we had the lowest voter turnout in 72 years in state history in the state of California. So if we continue mm -hmm. on the status quo and not make significant reforms, we will continue to get the same thing that we are, which is that of frustration and a lack of participation from the general electorate. So the real question then becomes, what are some bold proposals that we can implement that will fundamentally change the system of trajectory of that of civics and engagement? Okay, well, um, that's all the questions that I had and all the questions from the students. Is there anything else that you'd like to say to our viewers out there about the voting age or other um, areas where we can empower and expand rights to young people? I just think young people should look at the opportunities that they have before them mm -hmm. and to not be hampered by their age or being told that they're too young to do something and that rather they should seize the opportunity and find opportunities to be engaged, to be involved, and to think about their social responsibility. What is their role in society and how can they play a part in ensuring that we have an inclusive society for everyone? All right, well, I'm certainly glad and we're certainly glad that you did that and um, were you know, elected 
mayor at, at 26 and one of the youngest members in the state assembly. So thanks for uh, all the work you do in the assembly and for your advocacy on uh, the issues of young Californians. Thank you.